I hope your tea is piping hot today because we're talking about the wedding budget. Perfect amount. Sorry for interrupting your weekly vlogs, but we're gonna go old school in this video because we're talking about budget. In this video, we're gonna be talking about my wedding budget and the things I learned, the mistakes I made, the d smart decisions I made throughout this process. And then next video, we're gonna go through my solo bachelorette budget, just because again, that's something that I finally solidified so we can talk about it, but I wanted to do them as two separate videos because um, I just feel like it makes more sense. Okay. All right, everyone. So let's just start with the basics. I originally budgeted our wedding to be $30,000. And that was honestly just based off of the fact that everything that I've read says that's the average wedding budget in the U S and I'm like, cool. Sounds good to me. And then I quickly realized whether it's my taste or Hawaii or probably both of those factors that we were we were not going to be anywhere close to $30,000. So we raised the budget to 45,000. Fortunately, as I said in previous videos, we've already cash flowed 30,000. Around that time, my dad said, hey, I'm semi-retired, I'm getting all this money, let me give you money for your wedding, because he actually originally wanted to pay for the wedding, both of my parents did, and I was like, nah, we can do this ourselves. But uh, it turned out, that he gave me money anyways. He gave me 30,000, which is the original cost of the wedding that I thought. So I split that up, 15,000 towards the wedding, 12,500 towards our home down payment, and then 2,500 I gave myself for my solo bachelorette party because my dad did give me the money, so I felt like I was entitled to do that. So he brought us up to 45,000, and then somewhere in between, I actually did the budget. I talked about this in a vlog and I was like, Something in my body is telling me I need to check on this budget again, and we were at 60. Ultimately, I talked to both of my wedding planners, which we'll get into that, and then we were able to cut some things. So this is the semi-formalized, formal wedding budget. I don't think we're gonna go above this. We may go below, hopefully, depending on how many people RSVP or not, because we did, invite more than I wanted, to be honest. So everything that I've been doing in the wedding has actually been in the Notion or Master Plan Notion Wedding Planner. I'm very excited to announce, if you don't follow me on social, that we have finally released, finally released the wedding planner. So the template is online at masterplan.co if you're interested. So like the ticker says, we have three or three months away from the wedding. Here is what the wedding planner looks like. Again, a shout out to Jackie, who um, is a member of this community who actually helped me build this template because she's a Notion Pro. All right, so let's go into the wedding budget. This is actually the active one now. So here was the original cap, $45,000. And here is what it is now, $56,354.67, okay? So we are very much over our original budget of 30,000, but honestly, something that I would recommend to brides is if you have the financial ability to be a little bit flexible with your budget, it really does take a load off on the anxiety. Um, I, trying to stick to this $30,000 budget, I was in a constant state of stress. We are fortunately in the position where we can raise the budget and still cash flow this. So even though we're significantly over budget, we're still cash, and cash flowing it. We're not going into debt over this wedding. And being able to release that stress off of my shoulders has actually helped my mental health. And, you know, I know I'm definitely in a fortunate position to be able to go with the flow financially for this wedding. Um, but if you are able to, I would definitely obviously try to stick to the budget, but build yourself a realistic budget. And I know that's really like silly to say, but I had no idea how expensive things cost. Oh, I do want to say that this budget includes hotel and airfare, which is something that I didn't put in my original estimate of $30,000. So that was just for the wedding. And then, you know, things just, I just didn't think this through 
carefully, okay? So this is the template for the uh, master plan uh, Notion wedding planner. This is the budget template. So we have provided services and then vendors. We have categories and then of course we have total and then payment, payment dates, and then checked off whether it was due or not or paid or not. The cool thing about a lot of the vendors is that you'll be able to have like a payment plan. So you will have like payment one, payment two, payment three. And then the really cool thing about it being um, me having this in Notion is that we can actually set an alert. So I basically paid almost everything right now. We just have the hair and makeup, photography, um, wedding planner payment three and then the venue package payment three due so i'm able to actually set an alert a reminder to pay them because i've kind of forgotten a couple times and they've had to remind me so now i have a, an alert set and um, what i would recommend is trying to set an alert of payment at least five days maybe a week before because something like my uh venue package my final payment is like around oh it says right here eighteen thousand dollars so my wedding money where my med wedding money is is in a sinking fund in my ally account and um with that account pe i can only take out five thousand dollars at a time so a week before my payment is due, I need to call them and say, can you raise my limit to $18,219.89? The alerts are really helpful, especially if you are um, either need to transfer funds or you need to call your bank and let them know, like, this is about to happen. Don't freak out. It's not fraud. Just be prepared. So that's also really helpful. So I have my wedding planner with Anella Events. She's been really great. She does weddings in Hawaii and then also in California. And um, her total is about 4,700. It was more, um, but we'll get to it a little later. And then I have hair and makeup. So Cheryl Brown, you, you guys saw, I had my um, test with her when I went home in December. She's gonna be about $700 uh, for four people. So myself, I'm getting my hair and makeup done by her. My mom's getting her makeup done. And then my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law that's weird to say. And then we have the venue package. Find a venue that offers a package because I thought, I don't know where I got this in my mind, but I originally thought that going a la carte, meaning you get the venue, but then you also have to find your own florist, your own caterer, your own this, your own that, da 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 da. For some reason in my mind, I thought that was cheaper. But let me tell you, it is not. Find a venue that offers a package. So this is kind of what the package looks like. And this includes everything. It does include kind of like day of wedding coordination. It includes access to everything. We've rented out the entire, I would say farm really. It includes food, which you know, it was such a struggle for me to find food within the budget. And I'm gonna explain to you more about that later. Dessert, bar and staffing, florals, DJ services, transportation, it includes everything. So it might be a huge sticker shock. So we originally went with, we're at Charlie's Pond and the guest count was originally supposed to be at 75. It's now at 92. I don't wanna get into it. Um, and then that cost, the base cost is for 34,800. But again, that includes everything. And let me tell you why this is important. For example, the person that is catering our wedding now is a part of their package. And I believe their staffing and then the menu within the package is I think $5,000. There's a breakdown somewhere, but not that important. But I actually had reached out to him individually while I was still considering a la carte. So without the package, without the package, the exact same thing cost $8,000. Always find a venue with the package. It makes your life easier. The coordination team already knows what needs what you need to get. They're familiar with the site. It is just easier. So I did hire Angelica before I went, went to the package at the venue, which is why I have two wedding coordinators, but you know, they've been really great. They've been working really well together. And um, you know, it is what it is. Again, I kind of jumped the gun. Tip number two for me is like, if you have the time 
to take time to plan your wedding, do so. We're planning this wedding within a year. So I felt the need to make these, these decisions very quickly. And those decisions kind of ended up biting me in the ass budget wise and also just like poor decision wise because before I went with the venue package, I had previously hired a bartender. I was previously hired something else, I can't remember. And then I had to, like I gave them deposits and everything. And then after the breakdown um, or after we got the package, I realized like, I'm paying for like two bartenders. So fortunately I was able to cancel the other bartender, but you know, it's just a lot of wasted money that I did because I jumped the gun. And the reason why we, I wanted to plan this wedding this year is because next year our mutual friend is getting married in Italy. So I then wanted to have our honeymoon next year. So I like in my mind, it made sense wedding this year, honeymoon next year, so we can save up at different times and it won't be very stressful, but it still ended up being very stressful within the wedding planning process because we had to do this in such a short, I guess it's technically not a short amount of time. A year is a long time, but I feel like if I had, if we had a longer engagement, maybe like a two year engagement, I would have learned these things first before actually jumping the gun and spending money on things that we don't even have anymore. And then photography. So one thing that I did do well is I um, called in on some favors. Fortunately, Brian and I, obviously being in the creative space, we know creative people. So my friend is, we have friends doing our photography, videography, and maybe even like a shave ice cart. So my friend Rima, who has done, I've done a lot of, who's basically taken my photos every time I go to Hawaii. She's fantastic. And I love her style. I love that she's not traditionally like a wedding photographer. I love that she kind of comes from product and fashion. So she's um, 2,500, I think for six hours. And that is the homey discount. And then we are uh, asking our friends, Sobin and Duncan, who actually shot our um, uh, engagement kind of mini documentary. We're having them, we've asked them to shoot us in exchange for them shooting our wedding, which they were very excited that we asked them to, we're um, paying for their room, their hotel accommodations and their flights. So all that total, I can't do the math, was about like $3,500, which was still cheaper than the videographers I found on the island. So that ended up working out. So now we have alcohol at Costco. This was a quote 1200 that the wedding planner said was a good estimate. So we'll see if you all know my family, my Asian family and our friends are, are, are partiers. They enjoy a good time. So we'll see if 1200 is enough. But the cool thing is, is that at Costco, you can return any of the alcohol that you don't use. So that's a good option. So one thing I did, <laughs> I would recommend waiting to do in the wedding planning process is booking your hotel and your airfare. I mean, fairly quickly, but after you finalize the wedding budget, because that is something that actually screwed up our budget very early on was in my mind without anything really being finalized. I was like, we're so good. We're so under budget. Let me buy first class. Let me buy, let me buy us the uh, like best hotel, the room, the hotel it has to offer. Lo and behold, we were not that good <laughs> on the budget. So I bought, I, uh, we got the first class airfare and the really nice hotel before that. And obviously if you add it up, that, that's about $6,000. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I laugh about it because it is a lot of money, but I feel good about it now. But at the moment, while we were still trying to finalize the budget, I'm like, Asia, you are such a dumb, dumb dummy. Yeah, I just, I probably just should have waited before making those kinds of decisions. So everything, everything included the package, which again includes food, florals, rentals, is, which is so expensive. Everything that we need in the package, plus hair and makeup, plus the wedding planner, plus photography, videography, alcohol, room and board, room and board, like I'm in college. And I've padded a little bit for the extra amount of people that we have invited. According to the wedding planners, if we do go over 
our 72, 75 guest count, it's gonna be about $150 per added person. So I just did, you know, 2,100. So now we're at $56,354.67. Um, that's the budget. I haven't seen numbers that large since I was in student loan debt, you know? And then the other thing that I, would recommend as well always remembering what's most important to you because y'all really put me in my place a couple of vlogs ago when i was like i really regret getting married in hawaii because i feel like if it was i'm gonna cry because i'm talking about popo but because i feel like if we got married in la we would have been able to have just as gorgeous of a wedding but under budget and y'all put me in my place and reminded me that I did this for Popo. All right, so I know there was a lot going on in this video, but um, that's the budget. Within the budget, I talked about some of the mistakes I made throughout this process. There wasn't a lot, but the, it was just to a point where I think, I think the biggest thing that caused the mistakes was just trying to make decisions too quickly. But a couple things that I did do very well during this whole wedding process is one going with the flow if you look back at, at i think the video i did in december saying like my must-haves all those must-haves are no longer a part of the wedding because they are so significantly out of budget the one thing that i really wanted was a plated dinner we're having a buffet dinner because plated is significantly over our budget what i really wanted was a live band now we have a DJ. So I guess those are things that really weren't as important to me as I thought, because to me, there was nothing more important than just trying to stay within some kind of <laughs> reasonable budget, whatever that means now. But I did make a lot of sacrifices to things that I thought I wanted, but when push comes, came to shove and I realized how much more those things would cost me, I realized, eh, not that big of a deal. Another thing that I'm grateful that we didn't have was a wedding party. I've personally never been a part of a wedding party, but Brian has. And one, I think it's stressful as a person that is a part of the wedding planning pro or wedding party if you guys haven't kind of like discussed a budget to stay within. But also just like in the planning process, it's just easier. I don't need to coordinate with bridesmaids gowns or, you know, I don't know what else, what else that, that is included, but I'm just glad that we're not having a bridal party. I just think it's easier. It's less thought that I need to put into this wedding. So I'm grateful about that. And then also I'm grateful about, um, the, having my solo bachelorette party because it, there's just, it's just more stress-free for everyone and we'll get into that in the next video and then the other thing i did correctly was calling on some friends if there's ever a time to call in for the buddy hookup a wedding is the time so again we've called in the buddy hookup for the photographer the videographer one of my high school friends apparently has like a shave ice company on the north shore and then we have the hookup with a photo booth with a paparazzi photo booth in hawaii so you know we definitely did call in some favors i think if you really can be creative in trying to find people that you can ask to be a part of your big day. One, I think you should. And two, I think people would be more than honored to participate in your big day. So, you know, those are just the do's and don'ts, the budget, all the things that I have experienced through my wedding planning process. I am excited that this is the next chapter, the next phase in my life and my relationship, but I am very excited for it to be over. Actually, I wonder when my wedding dress is supposed to be done. <laughs> oh, oh, that's another thing. The budget didn't include my wedding dress because that's something my mom paid for. So we didn't have to include that within um, the wedding. And then also just like, if someone offers to help you, take that help. I was very like gung ho, like my parents are not putting a dime towards this wedding. I just wanted to do it ourselves. I thought that they sacrificed enough for me <laughs> that I wanted to take, take, on, take this on myself. And um, 
I'd never asked and they offered. And at first I said no, but when they kept on offering, I said, thank you. <laughs> it doesn't have to be financial help. Maybe it's just help in other ways to, to be a part of your wedding or to help you with your wedding. If someone offers, think about it and definitely try to say yes. Everything that you may need to refer back to from this video will be in the description box. All right, everyone, that's it. I'm Aisha Dang. Thank you so much for watching this video. And um, I hope this helps you in your wedding planning process if you're in the middle of it. If you, have, if you are married and you're all done, let us know some tips um, or some do's and don'ts that you learned within your planning process that you would then love to gift your knowledge to for someone else. All right, I'm Aisha Dang. I'll see you all next time. Bye.